Well, let's talk about Raw. That's all right. Yeah. Drew, excellent promo to start the show. Just a great promo about all that he had gone through to get where he is going this coming Saturday as he attempts to win the title in front of a crowd by defeating Bobby Lashley. Lashley then came out. He talked about how they'd been doing this essentially the same amount of time. It took them the same amount of time to get to the top. And they hyped up the match. And then right when everything's going great, Baron Corbin comes out tonight and says, Later tonight, I'm going to wrestle you, Drew McIntyre. Meanwhile, this NCAA... Anyway, Riddle's with Xavier and Kofi <laughs> backstage, and he's all being wacky. So we have AJ versus Xavier. This was a complete and total waste of time. I don't even know why it was on the show. They literally go one minute. AJ catches him in the calf crusher. He couldn't make Xavier look like a bigger geek. Kofi, the babyface, hurls... He fastballs a microphone at Omos, which distracts AJ... And Xavier cradles him for the pin. Waste of time, this segment. Split finger mic throw there. Yeah, it was impressive. Braun then comes down, and he cuts the best promo of his life. And the bad news is, this poor bloke has to come out and act like if the cage is surrounding the ring, nobody can get in and nobody can get out. It's like, and this is the, this is the sad thing, too. If they do this match on Saturday or Sunday or whatever... And nobody gets in and nobody gets out. Like, it doesn't matter. Because going into it, I don't believe this for a second. Because there's never a cage match where nobody gets in and nobody gets out. But that's like the whole point of his promo. You can't run. You can't hide. Blah, blah, blah. My Braun and Vince impersonations kind of bleed together. But anyway, he cuts a great promo about how Shane won't be able to run or hide. And uh, he's going to leave in a body bag. And what, then what he, he cuts his great promo. Yeah. And then Shane comes out and says, yes, Braun. But you're dumb. I'm like, dude, it's WrestleMania. It's the biggest show of the year. And that's what you came up with for this feud. Babyface Shane decided to call heel Braun dumb. And then they just switched randomly for no reason. Hmm. See, this is just giving you the opportunity to go, you know, from my opinion, it was going to be Braun Strowman and, and Adam Pearce, and it would have been much better. No, it wouldn't have, because they would have figured out a way to still include Shane and still do something ridiculous with all of this. And they did. And even though Braun Strowman's promo was very good as far as the words go, you know, his delivery of it and what he was saying, I just, I, I don't know. I just... <laughs> You had a long time to build to this. You actually had weeks and weeks to build to this thing, and this is the best you got with it. And even though Braun cut that passionate promo, you talk about not believe, being able to believe anything, the cage match they're going to be inside of. Did anything sound believable about that promo last well, night? Well, yeah, I mean, I mean he, he tried. delivered it with conviction. He but tried. I tried. Mean, That's all I it? ask. At least try. Not his fault know. they haven't booked a cage match right in uh, 25 years. That's true. They Elias. never booked one right anyway. Elias and Jackson Riker then faced Braun Strowman in a handicap match. So after all this talk about how he's not dumb, he accepts a match with two men. Well, but he beat them, so that was that was effective. Jackson Riker and Elias, it's not like it's a big risk. Miz and Morrison deface Bad Bunny's $3.6 million car. How did they deface it? They put a little bit of paint on it. Bugatti. And uh, he's outraged. I guess, I guess he can afford a $3.6 million car, but he can't afford a paint job. Hey, did you like how they were about to throw you? They do the paint job on the car. It's ruined. They ruined a $3.5 million car. But then they go to, like, give Bad Bunny the hip toss or whatever it was on top of the car, and they just pan over very quickly. There's a random Nissan just sitting there. Well, he landed on a crash pad. I can't show that. Please, Mike, <laughs> let me get through this this report for the love sorry. of God. Sorry, sir. So then uh, Bad Bunny, and he's in the parking lot, and then uh, Ms. Morrison beat him up and hip toss him onto a uh, crash pad. Rhea Ripley does a promo, which appears to me to be a heel promo. Then we have Rhea and Asuka versus Nia and Shayna, where Asuka goes up to the top and Rhea shoves her off the top rope. She beats her up and she costs her the match. And I texted my buddy and I said, oh, look, Rhea's a heel now. And you know what they responded? No. <laughs> no? No? See, brother, brother heel? she's a heel! Yeah. She's a heel. You cannot convince me otherwise. I don't care if they say big cheers for... She's a heel. 
Cedric and Shelton threatened MVP backstage. This poor bloke, Cedric, he goes, oh. well, you know, I'm facing Lashley. I probably won't win, but at least I'll... <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. Ow. You know, there's always a main event, buddy. Sarah is with Nia, Shayna, and Reginald. Sarah is the new uh, Charlie Caruso who uh, got the hell out of there and went to ESPN. Now Sarah is responsible for asking really, really stupid questions. Her really stupid question this week is, are you confident you'll win at WrestleMania? They say, yes, we are confident we're going to win at WrestleMania. What a dumb question. <laughs> and then Lana, Naomi, Dana, Mandy, Natty, Tamina, Right Squad, Billy Kay, they all show up. Nia explains them the rules, like we're at kindergarten circle time, and then they all stand in a single file line and they yell at each other. Horrible. It's a horrible segment. Well. Lashley versus Cedric Alexander. God bless Dave Meltzer. He told me this was competitive. No, it was not. <laughs> two men, two men attacked Lashley before the match. He beat both of them up by themselves. Mm -hmm. Then he beat up Cedric. Mm -hmm. Cedric got three moves in a 10-minute match. And then Lashley beat him up again and hurt locked him. Not competitive. Then, then they announced, listen. So the bane of my existence is this Reddit. Well, when they started doing this stuff with the Fiend and Alexa and her schoolgirl outfit and mounting half-naked men and all this, all I had to hear was how great it was. And every time something stupid happened, all I had to hear was, "Let's." W my favorite line, let's see how it plays out. I mean, how long do you have to watch this to realize it never plays out? But they are constantly sure that it's going to play out. In some positive way. Let's see how Burning Moo Chris plays out. Let's see how Alexa on this stretcher plays out. Let's see how this plays out. That plays out. Well, you know how this months and months and months and months and months long feud is played out between the Fiend and Randy Orton with magic and fire and smoking pyres and burnt to a Chris. You know how it plays out? How? They're having a wrestling match. What? That's WrestleMania. Not even a no DQ match. It's not even falls nothing. It's one on one. Do they start with a lockup? Now maybe the last minute they'll be like, "Oh, Jiminy Christmas, we gotta add something to this match." But I mean, this was the Raw Go Home Show, <laughs> and they told me that Randy Orton and the Fiend will be wrestling one on one, no stips. At WrestleMania. That, everyone, is how this played out. A wrestling match. It may devolve into a fight. You never... <laughs> I don't... Look, I, what do you want me to tell you, all right? What do you want me to tell you? I, I have nothing for this. Randy Orton and Triple H, remember that? They I needed a break. With, they fought with each other. They, 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 Triple H broke into Randy's house, supposedly threw him out of his bay window in front of his fake wife and all that stuff. And how did they start the match? They started it with a lockup. This is the feud equivalent to that. After all of this stuff here, we're going to have a wrestling match. Here's my thing. I don't believe them for a second. They've been known to false advertise in the past with some baits and switches and all that sort of stuff. I refuse to believe that this is going to be a wrestling match. I don't know what cinematic direction we're going to go with this thing. I still think there's going to be some sort of hybrid to it, something done in front of the fans, but also something done Bro, behind the scenes taped but, in advance. But this is but, the key. It doesn't matter what they do, okay? I know. What matters is Braun Strowman... And Shane McMahon are having a steel cage match because one guy called the other guy dumb. Meanwhile, Randy Orton lit the fiend on fire. He burnt him to a crisp. He killed him. And this is leading to a wrestling match in the ring with no stips. But let's see how it plays out. My favorite line. Then we had Bad Bunny cutting a very good promo. What do he's, you want me to say? He's very angry at The Miz. I don't want you to say anything. I just want to get this over with. Let's go. Then Why are Riddle, you reviewing this? Riddle faces Ali, and they have a really good match. And, of course, Ali gets beaten clean, so he's on his way to main event as well. Maybe he can face Cedric. Uh, we had another Drew promo. And then they put Drew McIntyre in the ring with a Baron Corbin. With 20 minutes left on the show, they wrestled for eight 
15 minutes. I love Drew. This match was boring. The but show was boring. He had to beat a big man, and the big show went to the other company, so he was unavailable. So he had to beat a big guy in his Baron Corbin, and he beats him, and then him and Lashley looked at each other. That's your go-home show for Monday Night Raw. It was not horrible. I mean, there were a few horrible things on the show, but it was it was, it was was largely there. It was interminably it was long. There. And one of the biggest problems is, is w, nobody does video packages nobody has ever done video packages like wwe they are the best in the business we have reached the point after watching all of those video packages and how we see them come together every week and because of the time that they have to fill i am already not looking forward to two days of these interminably long video packages putting together all of this crap all of this nonsense that we watched into a nice pretty package with a bow on it they do a spectacular job but just like watching last night it's going to make the next couple of days of wrestlemania even longer with these 10 minute packages it was brutal back in a moment with your calls to wrestling observer live if you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.